Greetings, gentlemen. In this video, I would like to discuss living my life in a state of voluntary celibacy whilst living in the Western world, and also talk a little bit about the benefits I've discovered in living my life in this manner. This whole voluntary celibacy thing started back in November of 2012. I was two months out from breaking up with my fiance and going my own way, and I was in Thailand on a two-week holiday the infamous holiday during which I engaged with eight ladyboys and then created a video about the experience for my YouTube channel. That video has had almost 20,000 views, by the way, and is my most popular video by far. Anyway, I was drinking at a bar in Soy 6, Patea, watching a Thai monk on arms rounds and wondered how the hell this individual could maintain a state of celibacy when he was surrounded by so much sexual temptation. That is when the penny dropped, and I thought to myself, if this person can choose celibacy for religious purposes, then I could choose celibacy as a power strategy. As I sat drinking at that bar, I thought about all the trouble that relationships with women in the West had gotten me into. All the time, money, and peace of mind they had cost me, and I figured that if I was voluntarily celibate, then no woman could get at me, and I could maintain my freedom indefinitely whilst having zero risk of losing my wealth in a divorce or separation. All I had to do was to maintain a state of voluntary celibacy for 11 months out of the year, and then, when I set foot back on Thai soil, cut loose and enjoy myself. If I could just master this one thing about myself as a man, my sex drive, that I would have the ultimate level of freedom. This thought kept going through my mind, and when I arrived back from my trip in 2012, I did indeed engage in voluntary celibacy. It's been a year and three months since that first trip, and I've been voluntarily celibate for that entire time. So, what are the benefits I've noticed of voluntary celibacy? The first benefit, of course, is time. I have much more time available these days, as I'm not spending vast amounts of it associating with women. No more dates, no more dinners at restaurants, no more nightclubs, no more having to deal with a woman's emotional shit. This factor, above all others, is responsible for the vast amount of time that I now have. Time is the most valuable commodity that we all have available to us. We should never waste time. As such, I've put all my free time that I now have available in my life by avoiding relationships with women to very productive use. In the last year, 2013, I've logged 700 hours learning the Thai language. I'm about 400 hours away from reaching language proficiency. I will reach language proficiency before my next trip to Bataya in 2014, November. I will be 35 years old at that time, and I can speak, read, and write the Thai language. A significant achievement for a Farang, as most foreigners don't know the Thai language. A whole new culture and way of life is available for me to experience, something I'm going to take full advantage of. I put a similar level of time and effort into my private business studies. I purchased all the books on the Melbourne University MBA book list, and I've read through and finished half of them. This increased knowledge on microeconomics, marketing, organisational behaviour, strategy, launching new ventures, and international human resources has been very valuable whilst working on my side business. I've reached new levels of excellence in my hobbies of videography and lighting. My video lighting skills have reached such a high level of skill that everyone who sees my business speeches cannot believe that they were filmed at home in a home video studio. This is what is possible when you study the book, Light, Science and Magic, and apply the lighting skills to your productions. I've continued to work out. I'm muscular, lean and aerobically fit. I run for at least 20 minutes a day or sprint uphill and I'm lifting heavier and heavier weights. 
It feels really good to reach new levels of achievement in my workout routine. I opened this YouTube channel. I'm gaining more and more subscribers by the day. It seems that people are interested in my experiences and what I have to say. Overall, I feel like I've achieved more in one year than what I did in three years whilst living with my ex-girlfriend. There's a clue here as to why many geniuses throughout history were celibate. They had vast amounts of free time available to spend thinking, inventing and helping humanity because this time wasn't being su sucked up by nagging women and crying children. Now, I'm no genius, but I can still achieve worthwhile things when I put my mind to it. I recently created a time spreadsheet and I calculated that by living my life in this voluntarily celibate manner, I have about 10,000 hours free every six years. Malcolm Gladwell, in his book Outliers, discussed that anyone who spends 10,000 hours on a subject can reach a level of mastery that makes them a world expert on that subject. That is an interesting book, by the way, that all MGTOW should read. So, by the time I'm 65 years old, if I continue to live in this voluntarily celibate manner, and devote myself to my work, my hobbies, I could build up 10,000 hours in five different subjects. That opens up interesting possibilities now, doesn't it? I found an interesting little essay on the internet, which I stuck on my wall, and I keep it firmly in mind at all times. It's about female entitlement syndrome. Here we go. Basically, female entitlement syndrome is a group of learned behaviours in contemporary Western culture that are based in part on the false assumption that a female is entitled to certain special privileges that a male does not and should not have. In the real world, where true equality between males and females exists, these special privileges have no legitimate basis for their existence. So the abnormal and or detrimental group of behaviours that combine to create the female entitlement syndrome can become sociopathic in its lack of a sense of moral responsibility or social conscience towards males, since the ultimate entitlement of the special privileges for females results in the oppression of males. Males who give in to these special female privileges must ultimately forego the recognition of their own emotional and economic needs. The special privileges that females demand from males in Western culture has resulted in the creation of a subservient class of males whose main function in life is to protect, economically support, sexually please, and emotionally agree with the female they are mated with. Such males can never attain the greatness of men like Picasso, Einstein or Aristotle because the virtual psychological and economic enslavement to the females that dominates the subservient class of males robs them of the time necessary to create new inventions that other men in the past have accomplished, which includes the creation of nuclear power, airplanes, submarines, televisions, light bulbs, computers, cell phones, medical advances, and other inventions that have contributed greatly to the human race. The oppression of this subservient social class of males has been, heretofore, unrecognised and or almost completely ignored when evidence of such economic, social and sexual repression sur surfaces. So, it looks like voluntary celibacy is a way to avoid becoming a subservient man, avoid becoming oppressed, and instead become a powerful man, free from psychological and economic enslavement to a female, whilst possibly contributing something great to the human race. This appeals to me greatly. Some more benefits I've noticed of voluntary celibacy. I have more money, as I'm no longer spending it on expensive dates, nights out, drinking and picking up, internet dating and so on. 
I've continued investing my money into my retirement fund and other investments like index funds. At the age of 34, I've built up three and a half times my income in net worth, not including my side business, the value of which is highly speculative. That's a great start for someone my age, and due to compound interest, I'm guaranteed to be wealthy in my old age. The only thing that could muck that up would be a future divorce. I have more time to spend working at my day job and side business. I'm now free to concentrate 100% on my work and this has led me to achieving more as I'm no longer distracted at work due to relationship dramas in my life. Dramas that my woman loved to manufacture. I'm able to work as many hours as I want at home without hearing my ex-girlfriend's dog barking and without her constant interruptions which mainly centred around her needing emotional support and involved me listening empathically as she unloaded all the bullshit she had to deal with that day. Something she needed to do to feel close to me, she said. What crap. I felt that unloading on her about my day constituted a cruel and unusual punishment, so I always remained silent on how my day was. Spending time in Thailand watching old women pull rickety food carts through the street in the hot midday sun. That was worth complaining about. My ex-girlfriend living and working in luxury here in the West had nothing to complain about in comparison to that. Anyway, by living in this voluntary celibate manner, I have real peace of mind as I have no nagging woman in my ear carrying on about ridiculous shit. I have less physical labour to do because I live in a rented apartment and I don't need to worry about home maintenance. No more painting, roofing, yard work and the myriad of other tasks that go along with home ownership. This used to suck up vast amounts of my time and labour. I have an amazing degree of freedom. I can come and go as I please without having to deal with a woman asking me where I'm going, who I'm going to see, when I'm coming home and so on. I take off for Thailand twice a year without guilt and without having to negotiate my trips with anyone except my bosses at work in my day job. People who also, in time, will not play a part in my life as I'm building up my side business so that I will have 100% control over my time and my life. I engage with women and ladyboys in Thailand and I don't give a flying fuck what anyone thinks of my behaviour. I'm amazed by the sheer number of sexual partners I've had in Thailand in the past two years, around 21 sexual encounters with 15 different partners. I don't think that I could ever live my life without some sexual release. Celibacy forever would not suit me. I feel that I have a reasonable balance living in celibacy 11 months out of the year, whilst having sexual freedom and abundance for one month out of the year with stunningly attractive partners whom I pay money to for sex in Thailand. I have no risk of losing my wealth via divorce or separation. The bottom line is that I've been very lucky twice in my life not to have lost half of my wealth. At age 34, I will not tempt fate for a third time, as I've noticed that many women my age appear to be in wallet-seeking mode, and things have gotten much more serious for them on settling down and finding a good provider. They are losing their looks and suddenly, boring, predictable, good job, high status position as a business owner, very respectable net worth, stable, Mr. Pretender is now worthy of their time. Fuck off, ladies. Where were you 10 years ago when you were young and beautiful? Fucking bad boys, as I recall. You avoided me then, but suddenly now I'm good enough. Well... I have seen, experienced, and know too much about your behaviour to ever be a beta provider for you. Nothing to see here, ladies. Move right along. Voluntary celibacy is a great thing, but it does have its negatives. I've noticed that I've changed sleeping patterns. I no longer sleep for eight or nine hours, and if I get seven hours a night, then I consider that a good night's sleep. This may, however, be due to age, but I believe that it may be nature's way of getting me up early to hunt, an evolutionary signal to go out and find a mate to procreate with. 
I have no sex, obviously, in the West. I have, however, broken my voluntary celibacy five times during the past 520 days whilst living in the Western world. I simply broke down and couldn't help myself. Yes, I had sexual relationships three times with a 38-year-old single mother with two kids that I met at an over-28s nightclub in 2012. I had sex once with an Asian prostitute and once with a New Zealand prostitute in 2013. I've been celibate for the past two months since returning home from Thailand in December of 2013. The other negatives, of course, are foregoing a possibly great relationship, having children of my own, sharing on household bills and so on. Mostly, however, living alone and living in this state of voluntary celibacy has more positives than negatives. I never considered that I would ever live like this. Not me. Not the man obsessed with women. I must say, however, that living like this, the price really is eternal vigilance. It's so very easy to lose your freedom. I came very close to losing my freedom once about six months ago. I met a single mother at the over 28s nightclub and there was an intense physical attraction between the two of us. It was an incredible high dancing with that woman and she had very high interest level in me. I kept thinking, however, that having anything to do with the single mother would not only lose me my freedom, but would lead me to losing money, time and sanity, as well as having to deal with another man's kids. In fact, I could lose everything fucking around with a single mother, so I don't do this anymore. But hey, that's the reality of the dating game once you reach age 34. There are other things that have come up as well, including a former girlfriend from the past who has taken up a lot of my time recently. But I'm happy to help her as a friend, only, without sex. She's a married woman now. I guess that's my nice guy side showing itself. Not much more really to say on this topic this time, other than if you're a MGTOW, I would highly recommend that you try voluntary celibacy solely as a power strategy whilst living in the West. It will keep you out of trouble and free up much more of your valuable time for your work and for your hobbies. All the best, gentlemen.